really animals. I uh, just ignore. So we we knew that uh, that you liked the book, but what I didn't know until I saw you personally was that you yeah, it, it wasn't worth liking that you love this book. Why or how? Like t tell us how. Because you were on fire when you started talking about it. Don't listen. Yeah, don't listen, Justin. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's quite seldom that I somehow get a book or that someone sends me a book. I mean, maybe this didn't happen before, this, um, that a publisher sent me a book, German publishing, and somehow maybe he thought there is something we share. So he sent it, and uh, it wasn't known in the German-speaking world, your book, so I just read it. And then I was really like hit by, I don't know, a blizzard and a thunderstorm. So for me, it was like it had so much to do with the things that I deal with. So it's often childhood, and it's some kind of brutal childhood, but also some way to deal with it in a in a beautiful, poetic, very visual, driven way. There's a there's a kind of fixation and an obsession with realism in American literature, contemporary American literature, and kind of breaking any rules you know of, of the realist universe people people are like oh this is this is something magical this is fantastical this is you know it belongs over there it's not like realism um but i didn't know that when i was writing the book <laughs> i found that out since the book has been out but but when i wrote the book i just felt free to do whatever i wanted and yeah. so there's there's a lot of there's absolutely a lot of moments in the book that are not, they're just completely based in my head. I, I, I didn't test them out in the world or whether or not they could happen, but people read it mm -hmm. as, as, as utter realism, utter realism. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if both of your books were longer or if you throw a lot of things away because they seem so compressed, like are you just like wondering every word or do you create lots of material and then um, throw it around? Uh, I no, I don't. I I find it incredibly difficult to write. Uh, I'm not one of these writers that just like writes and writes and writes and writes and has pages. I I think it's I spend a lot of time thinking about each word and each line and each sentence, and it's so I move so slowly. I mean, if I write like a paragraph, I like have a cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, did you struggle with, with this idea of did people say, oh, we don't know what label to put on you? Or was it the other way around that you said, like, oh, I have so many, I want to talk about race, I want to talk about poverty, I want to talk about homosexuality? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, I think that those are kind of, those are the obsessions like race and class and gender and sexuality. Those are the, those are the obsessions that have kind of defined my life and that I, I think a lot about. And so I was always going to kind of write about them. But it, you, that reminds me of, um, of James Baldwin, who like, he was on TV and being interviewed, and, and the interviewer was like, oh, like, you know, you're like black, and you're gay, you know, and you like grew up, you were born in Harlem, and they grew up in Harlem, like, do you feel like you've just been dealt like the worst hand? Like, do you just feel like you, you really got, you know, a lot stacked against you to be a writer? And he was like, I feel like I won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I think, I think that it's, it's these kind of, I think facing a lot of uh, facing a lot of discrimination in America, dealing with a lot of shame in your own life, um, is great when you when you want to write. Yeah, I mean, it sucks all the rest of the time, <laughs> but it's it's when you're sitting down to write. I mean, it's uh, it's a real. I mean, it's a real source for me, kind of engaging with kind of structures of of. of I don't know, structures that have defined my life, you know? Um, things, things that have shamed me and, and all of the pain. I mean, I, I think that it's like, you know, it was, yeah, it sucked at the time, but now I, I, can, I can really make art with it and it still hurts. It doesn't like make it better, you know? Like it doesn't like, it doesn't feel cathartic. It doesn't feel like I'm like triumphing or anything, but it does, it, it, at least I'm doing something. At least, at least I'm doing something. But, I, but this was on the list of possible titles. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to to play with language. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that was the most important thing. Is that Does it rhyme somehow your title? Do people say like me, the animals? No, I think that maybe if you're English, you would say we the animals. Mm -hmm. But I think America's we the animals. <laughs>
Uh, so. Oh, with animals. Yeah, with animals. No. Okay. It's, there's a kind of riff on We the People, which is like the beginning of the US Constitution. Um, but there's a comma, We the People. Um, and there's like, we had like a long discussion over this <laughs> constitutional comma and whether or not to. Share. I was really against it. Um, I want it's, it's, it's not grammatically correct. Like, you would never say we the animals. Like, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So it was, it was important to me that it, that it not kind of make. I was a very shy person. I was a very awkward, shy person. And this book came out, and I kind of had to overcome that. And I've been, I've been talking about it for like, like four, five years. Um, and I should stop. I should I should be reading new work. I should be I should I should be writing another book. I should be I should I should be past this moment and I feel a little bit arrested. I feel totally yeah, it's been bad. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm gonna write another book one day. I just don't wanna write a bad book, you know? Like I just don't wanna do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah, but I mean, this, this book is about your early teens mostly, and everything I read about your 20s sounds so crazy interesting. Yeah. Plus, you don't have to do like autobiographical work all the time, but it sounds like you have so much stuff to say. So, like, yeah. well, that's the that's the problem, though. Like, so so I want to write a book about my about these kind of my 20s, and I was I was basically a prostitute for many years. And but the thing is that when you're a child. The decisions that you make, you're innocent, right? I mean, they don't reflect on you as the, as the adult human being. Like, they're, you know, this is, I did a lot of crazy things as a child, or as a young teenager, but they're not, I wasn't responsible, you know. Now, if I write about this, I have to talk about it, you know, for, and I have to justify it. And it reflects on me as a kind of adult human being, the decisions I made as an adult. And this is, this is something that really kind of shuts me down. Um, it, that's, that's important to point that out. And the idea that, that we're in relation to the animal world, right? That, that we are one animal in a group of many animals. But I think that your point of, about going back is, is yeah, maybe, maybe being human is like, you know, it's, it, maybe we can be too human, right? That's what, I don't know, that's how they translate Nietzsche in English, you know, it's like all too human. This idea that, that we could, I don't know, that it's possible, that we could be kind of exhausted by all that it takes to be civilized, right? Like, some of the greatest pleasures in my life are animal pleasures, right? Like, food and sex and play, right? Like, play, just, and it becomes more and more difficult, I think, to, to engage in those animal pleasures in a kind of guilt-free, uncivilized, undomesticated kind of way, to just be wild. I mean, everything is, is kind of structured to, to drum the wildness out of us. Um, it's also scary. It's also, you know, like, if you, if you really are wild, you can, you can be quite violent, right? If, you, if you're prone to giving into your passions, it can be bad, but I don't know. It seems kind of wonderful to, to revert sometimes, right? Mm. But these distinctions, sorry, I don't believe so much in them, like people, what, what is so human, what is invented by humans. It's like when I'm talking about like the financial market and everything, that's so not what animals are doing, but at the same time it's so brutal and everything. So how can you really make the distinction? And I think also in this contemporary fashion in the cultural studies, it's, it's called human-animal studies, they're talking about this relationship between man and animals and maybe we have a new concept of being human and that's why we are interested in another way what animal is and is there something that makes a distinction or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but quite a jungle, the don't you get kind of market. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. But don't you think that, that that kind of, I don't know, sometimes when I read these books about 
like studying what ants do, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like, like ants, you know, mm -hmm. think collectively and like mm -hmm. they like blah blah blah, and then, and then you and then they like make these analogies to the human world, and I'm just like, no, like no, I, I think it's I think it's a weird justification, right? And of 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 what we're doing, right? Like I, I think what am I trying to say? I worry when the animal is used to excuse things that seem particularly mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like the financial market is a particularly complex and complicated human invention that exists in order to extract wealth and keep people living. In yeah, but the thing right? is, like, is, is civilization something that is not brutal as animal life is brutal or nature life is brutal? So. Yeah, but I think that that brutality is not found actually in the animal world. I, I guess that's mm -hmm. my point, right? Mm -hmm. I think that okay. animals can be brutal, mm -hmm. right? They can fall into, yeah. but that systematic, systematic yeah. brutality, right, that is endemic <laughs> to our world is spe it's specific to humans. Yeah. Only we, okay. yeah. Yeah. only we, okay. Okay. right? Like only we like enslave other people, yeah. right? Like it's okay. Then going back yeah. because when we talk about going back from human to animal, maybe it's um, it is like talking about a hierarchy uh, um, when we read Darwin or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then human is like the the one who is on top of the pyramid, yeah. and also in its civilization process. So, but you you describe it the other way around. 